what if we have a sample of data instead of a population of data? For Ethan and Drew's problem, again, we considered this a population of data because they went on a 10-day fishing trip, and this was the data from all 10 days. So this was a population as opposed to a sample. So what we calculated when we calculated sigma is a parameter. But what if we have a sample instead of a population, then we're gonna to need to calculate the statistic. And now here's the big deal about this. For sample standard deviation, the formula is not exactly the same. So we have different notation and the calculation will be slightly different. So now consider the formula for sample standard deviation instead of population standard deviation. Now we're going to denote sample standard deviation by the letter S. So a lowercase sigma for population standard deviation, that's a parameter. S for sample standard deviation, that's a statistic. The sample standard deviation S of a variable is the square root of the sum of the square deviations about the sample mean divided by n minus 1, where n is the sample size. So if you take a look at our formula, we calculate S by using a square root. Again, that's to get us back to normal units. That's why we're using the square root. We're going to take each data value minus the mean. Now that mean in this case is a sample mean, so it's an X bar instead of a mu, and we square that. So that part's the same, right? So here we took each data value minus the mean and we squared it, we added that up. The only technical difference is this was a mu for the mean because it was a population. This is an X bar because it's a sample. So we're gonna do that for every data value, but then look what we do. We divide by n minus one, whereas in the formula for the population standard deviation, we divided by n. So we're not gonna divide by n, we're gonna divide by n minus one. And of course we're using lowercase n because it is a sample. Or again, we could use the shortcut notation, the sum of x sub i minus x bar squared divided by n minus one. So again, we're finding the squared deviations and we're adding those all up and then we're dividing by n minus one and then square root. The computational formula for sample standard deviation is this. So this computational formula, this is the conceptual formula. The computational formula works a lot like this formula. So we take each data value and square it and add it up. We take all of the data values, add them up and square the result and divide by n and subtract that. But the difference is we divide by n minus one and then square root. So, suppose the data for Ethan and Drew had been sample data. What would have been their sample standard deviations? So if Ethan's and Drew's data from before had been sample data instead of population data, what would their sample standard deviation be? Well, I'm gonna pull back in the information that we did When I took each data value minus the mean and squared it and added that all up, I got 236. Well, if Ethan's data had been a sample, his mean would still be 10 fish. So that would be X bar for Ethan. And likewise for Drew. If Drew's data, if Drew's data had been sample data, his mean would still be 10 fish. So if I were to take nine minus 10, I'd still get negative one. And if I took 24 minus 10, I'd still get 14. Eight minus 10, I'd still get negative two. So if this was sample data, all of these numbers right here would still be the same for Ethan. And when I squared all of those, Negative one squared would still be one. 
14 squared would still be 196 and so on. All of these numbers would still be the same. So if I added all of those numbers up, if I added all of these numbers up right here, I'd still get 236 square fish. Nothing would change there. So for Ethan, the sum of his squared deviations would still be 236 square fish. And the same for Drew. All of these numbers right here for Drew would still be the same, and all of these numbers here would, for Drew would still be the same. So if I added up all of these numbers for Drew, I'm still going to get 626, even if it had been a sample. So for Drew, the sum of the x sub i minus x bar squared would still be 626 square fish. So what would be different if I wanted to calculate Ethan's sample standard deviation, his sample standard deviation, I'm going to denote that S sub E, S for standard deviation, E for Ethan, would equal the square root of 236 square fish divided by 10 minus 1. So now again, if it was a population, I divided by 10. Because it's a sample, I'm going to divide by 10 minus 1. That's the difference in the formula. So in other words, I'm really dividing by 9. So if I take the square root of 236 divided by 9, that is equal to 5.12. and the units would be back to fish. Similarly, for Drew, Drew's sample standard deviation would be the square root of 626 square fish divided by 10 minus 1. In other words, really divided by 9. So if I take the square root of 626 divided by 9, that would be about 8.34. And again, the units would be back to fish. Well, what's the point? Well, we need to pay attention whether we have sample data or population data. We need to know if we're calculating a parameter or a statistic. And for the first time now, it really matters. Because if Ethan's data is a population, and I calculate his standard deviation thinking it's a sample, I don't get the same answer. If Ethan's data is a sample, his standard deviation is 5.12. If Ethan's data is a population, then his standard deviation is 4.86. Similarly, for Drew, if Drew's data is a sample, his standard deviation is 8.34. If Drew's data is a population, his standard deviation is 7.91. Different calculation. So what does that mean? That means if you are supposed to be finding sigma and you find s, you get the incorrect answer. So the only real difference in the calculation is if it's a sample, you divide by n minus 1. If it's a population, you divide by n in the calculation. So I have a question. Why on earth do we divide by n minus 1? It makes sense when we divide by n we're averaging all of those square deviations. That makes sense. So why are we dividing by n minus 1 instead of n whenever it's a sample? Well, I have two reasons for that. One is not the complete truth. It's true, but it's not the complete reason. The other reason is the real reason, but we're kind of not to a point to really understand it just yet. So I don't want to confuse you too much with the real reason. So I'm going to give you a kind of a partial reason to make a little more sense about it. So 
remember what our real goal is. Our real goal is to be able to use samples to predict what's true for the population, right? We want to be able to do inference. Well, statisticians discovered over a long time period that when we have a sample of data, if we divide by 10 here, the calculation that we get for the standard deviation is oftentimes a little bit too small. So in other words, when we divide by n instead of n minus 1, the calculation that we get is often a little smaller than what the real population standard deviation is for that population. So for that reason, statisticians decided if we divide by n minus 1, we are adjusting the standard deviation to be a little bit bigger than it would be otherwise. And so again, notice that for Ethan, when we calculated by dividing by 10, we got a standard deviation of 4.86. When we calculated by dividing by 10 minus 1, we got a standard deviation of 5.12. 5.12 is a little bit bigger than 4.86. So we have adjusted the standard deviation to be a little bit bigger on purpose. And as a general rule, that makes our estimate of the population standard deviation a little more accurate on the whole. So for that reason, this sample standard deviation that we have right here, sometimes this is called the adjusted standard deviation. the adjusted standard deviation. We are adjusting it intentionally to make it a little bit bigger. For that same reason, the population standard deviation is sometimes or often referred to as the unadjusted standard deviation. We are not adjusting it. So we have the adjusted standard deviation, we have the unadjusted standard deviation. The adjusted standard deviation is the sample standard deviation, the unadjusted standard deviation is the population standard deviation. Now, that's sort of like the unofficial reason why we are dividing by n minus one. We're adjusting it intentionally to make it, as a general rule, more likely to be closer to what the true standard deviation of the population is going to be. We're adjusting it on purpose. Now, the real reason is something called degrees of freedom. In the calculation of sample standard deviation, n minus 1 is called the degrees of freedom. Why do we divide by n minus 1? So again, we're dividing by n minus 1, the degrees of freedom, to adjust the standard deviation to be a little bigger than it would otherwise be. Now, what in the world is degrees of freedom? Well, I don't want to confuse you too much with it, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I want to kind of give you an idea about what degrees of freedom are. So suppose in this class that I didn't take grades on homework or quizzes. Suppose the only grades that you got in this class were three tests. Then if I were going to calculate your grade in this class, I would just take your three test scores, add them up and divide by three, and that would give me your grade in the class. So in other words, I would take your first test score plus your second test score plus your third test score, and I would divide by three, and that would give me your overall average in this class. Now, suppose I told you that your final grade in this class is going to be, say, a 90%. So if your final grade in this class is going to be a 90%, what scores could you make on the three tests? Well, do you see they could vary a little bit, right? So you might get a 90 on the first test, a 90 on the second test, and a 90 on the third test. That's one possibility. If that happened, then you would get 90 plus 90 plus 90 would be 270 divided by 3 would give you a 90 average. Or you might make an 80 on the first test, 100 on the second test, and then a 90 on the third test. 
So 80 plus 100 plus 90 would be 270 divided by 3 would be 90. So there could be a little bit of variation. But suppose this. Suppose you made an 85 on the first test. And suppose you made a 92 on the second test. If you're going to get a 90 average, what would your third test score have to be? Your third test score would have to be a 93, otherwise you're not getting a 90. So that's sort of the ideas of degrees of freedom. If there's three data values, there's some freedom in what those three data values could be. They can vary. But if you know what you got on the first two data values, the third value is predetermined by what the previous two are, if you know what the final mean has to be. So even though there's three values, there's only two degrees of freedom. The first two can vary, but then the third one really can't because it's going to be predetermined by what the previous two are. That's the idea of what degrees of freedom are. So even though you have three values that could vary, really only two can vary because the third one has to be a specific value depending on what the previous two are. Otherwise, you're not getting a 90. So that's the idea of degrees of freedom. And really what we're doing in the sample standard deviation formula is we're dividing by the degrees of freedom, n minus 1. So instead of three tests, if you had 10 tests, then nine degrees of freedom would exist. The last value would be predetermined by the previous nine, how they vary. Now, you don't have to worry too much about degrees of freedom for now. I just wanted to kind of give you a little explanation as to what we're really doing there. We're dividing by the degrees of freedom instead of the sample size. So later on, when we get around to uh, chapter eight, we'll deal with degrees of freedom more at that point. And so it'll make a little more sense probably after we get there. But that's what's really going on. For you, the main thing that you need to know right now is pay attention. If it's a population and you find the sample standard deviation, your answer is going to be wrong. If it's a sample and you find the population standard deviation, your answer is going to be wrong. And every semester, I get emails from students saying, I don't understand this. I'm calculating it like the formula says, but I'm getting the wrong answer. Or I'm letting the calculator or stat crunch calculate it for me and I'm getting the wrong answer. Well, the reason they're getting the wrong answer is because they're supposed to be finding, say, population standard deviation, but they're getting the sample standard deviation. So you got to pay attention to that. Now, before class, I entered Ethan's and Drew's data into my lists on my calculator. So I have Ethan's data in list one on my calculator, and I have Drew's data in list two on my calculator. Your calculator can calculate standard deviation. So with the data entered, I'm going back to the home screen. If I go to stat and calc, one variable statistics, and if I do it for Ethan, Ethan's data is in list one. So my list is in L1. If you have an older calculator, when you choose stat and one variable statistics, on your calculator, it'll say one var stats. You put L1 behind that and hit enter. And it will calculate the same thing that I'm going to get when I choose calculate here. So if Ethan's data is a population, then his mean will be 10. Now, by the way, the calculator just says X bar. It doesn't say mu. But if this is a population, know that that's really a mu instead of an X bar. As far as standard deviation goes, look right here. The calculator calculates sigma which is 4.8579, blah, 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 which rounds to 4.86. That is what we got 
when we calculated Ethan's standard deviation as a population, 4.86. But look right above that. If Ethan's data is a sample, then the standard deviation is 5.12, which is what we got when we said Ethan's data was a sample instead. So the calculator calculates it both ways. Now, there's not really two standard deviations. The standard deviation is one or the other of these, right? So you're either gonna use the adjusted or the unadjusted, depending on if you have a sample or a population. Now there is other things here that the calculator calculates as well, like you got the sum of the X's. So all the data values added up to 100. You got the sum of the X squares. The sum of the X squares, that's what we got right here, 1,236, so the calculator finds that. You're not gonna usually need that, but in case you do, it is there. Okay, we can do the same thing for Drew. If I do stat, calc, one variable statistics for Drew's data, which is in list two, I get the same kind of result so if Drew's data is a sample, his standard deviation is 8.34. If it's a population, his standard deviation is 7.91. So we got 7.91 when we were treating it as if it was a population. And then we got 8.34 when we treated it as if it was a sample. So again, depending on your problem, it'll be one or the other, you pay attention. Let me show you StatCrunch real quick. So again, before class, I entered Ethan's and Drew's data into StatCrunch. So I have Ethan's data in the far left column and then Drew in the right. So if I wanna calculate Drew or Ethan's standard deviation, I do that the same way that I calculated the mean. So I go to Stat and Summary Stats and I choose columns. Now I can either pick Drew or Ethan or both. I'm gonna pick them both. So it's gonna calculate all the information for Ethan and it's gonna calculate all of the information for Drew. And remember that there's a lot of stuff that's pre-selected here. Now there's a big warning I'm about to give you here in StatCrunch. When I say compute, so StatCrunch tells me, for example, let's look at Ethan. Ethan's sample size is 10, his mean is 10. His variance is 26.222 repeating. His standard deviation is 5.12, and so on and so on and so on. Now look at that standard deviation right there, 5.12. That is the sample standard deviation. That's the adjusted standard deviation. Similarly, if you look up here at Drew's, Drew's standard deviation is 8.34, which is the adjusted, the sample standard deviation. So by default, StatCrunch assumes that you're going to have a sample of data, not a population of data. So when it calculates the standard deviation, it calculates it using the N minus one division. So here's the problem for you. Now, most of the time, that's not gonna be a problem at all because most of the time, after we get out of chapter three, you're going to have samples. But what if you have a population of data? Well, these would be incorrect calculations for standard deviation. So to get around that, there are other calculations that are not selected by default. Included in those calculations are unadjusted variance and unadjusted standard deviation. So this would be the population variance and the population standard deviation. So if I have a population, I have to calculate the unadjusted standard deviation or the unadjusted variance. So what I'm doing, I'm gonna take my finger, I'm gonna hold down the control button on my computer and I'm going to select unadjusted variance and unadjusted standard deviation. And that adds those two calculations to my list of calculations. Now, if you don't hold down the control button when you select those, 
then it will deselect all of the stuff that was previous selected and only select the things you click on. So by holding down control and selecting them, it adds those to the list of things that it's going to calculate. So when I say compute now, over here, I have the unadjusted variance, which for Drew is 62.6, for Ethan, 23.6, and the unadjusted standard deviation, which for Drew is 7.91, and for Ethan is 4.86. So again, you have to remember that. If you have a population of data and you're using StatCrunch to calculate the standard deviation, you got to go get the unadjusted standard deviation. And this is the kind of problem that I get lots of emails every semester from students saying, I don't know what's going on. StatCrunch has given me the wrong calculation. StatCrunch is doing exactly what you tell it to do. So you have to go get the unadjusted standard deviation. The last thing that I want to say here about calculation of variance and standard deviation, I just want to remind you of the relationship between variance and standard deviation. Essentially, if you know one, you know both, because the only difference between variance and standard deviation is the square root. So if you know, for example, that the variance is 36, then the standard deviation is going to be 6, the square root of the variance. And likewise, if you know that the standard deviation is, say, 4, then the variance is going to be 16 the square of the standard deviation. So really when you know one, you know both. And so that's what this is saying. The variance of a variable is the square of the standard deviation. So for that reason, the population variance is gonna be denoted by sigma squared. So if sigma is the standard deviation, sigma squared is the variance. Likewise, the sample variance is gonna be denoted by S squared. So again, if S is the standard deviation, S squared is the variance. And by the way, your calculator does not tell you the variance. It just gives you the standard deviation. So if you want the variance, you can just take the standard deviation, whether it's sample or population, and square the appropriate one to get the sample or population variance. StatCrunch will tell you both, but again, you got to pay attention to whether you need the adjusted or the unadjusted.